We see them all the time, and although not every player in the world has a base stadium, we all wonder what the base stadiums in the anime are actually made of. Now we know how big the base stadiums are in real life from one of my previous videos, link in the description below. There are a few scenes that give us a hint as to what the base stadiums are actually made of. We can also use the Beyblade Bird Show and manga as a reference to then use the process of elimination to know what the stadiums are not made of. Because from any way you look at it, the base stadiums are a crucial part of the Beyblade Bird Show. Given their sheer scale, prominent use, and the power level from these bladers, we know that the material composition of the base stadium must be rigid. Definitely not hollow like these base stadiums. Therefore, materials like foam, foam boards, and cloths are really out of the question. What, you think blading on a cloth is weird? Well, the first big of my bays, that's B-A-I-S. They're referred to worldwide as spin tops and in Japan as koma. They date back over 300 years and they were actually spun on cloth arenas. In fact, the oldest form of Beyblades or spin top date back over 6,000 years. Enough in the history though, because we know that base stadiums have to be light as Iger and his sister roll a base stadium on the ground with relative ease in the Beyblade Burst Turbo Show. We can compare the size of the base stadiums in the show to the manga and see that Taika's base stadium is indeed different than the ones they used before and it looks like the predecessor to the ones they eventually use throughout the manga after the season. Now. There's gonna be a few assumptions made in this video, so stick around till the end if it just doesn't make sense. Because I'm gonna assume that all the Beyblade stadiums will be made of the same composition. That is to say that they may appear different, but the contents will still be the same no matter the season for the purposes of this video. Some viewers have theorized that this could mean that the base stadium itself could be made of wood or better yet, metal. Like this satellite stadium you could use for a base stadium too as Iger and his dad are metal workers who live in the wilderness and have the skills to potentially make their own Beyblade Stadium if they so choose to. But this is unlikely as, first of all, wood is a flammable material that while being strong, durable, and workable, it can be ignited with friction. And the Beyblades create a lot of that, especially at the high speeds that they're moving at in the anime. Now, if you take a close look at the Beyblade drivers when they're spinning, there is somewhat of a spark that is created and this could be interpreted as heat, but not a burning flame. They're more like scorch marks. And this is not exclusive to the show as in the manga, we see that Beyblades move at high speeds and exert a lot of force when they hit. With all that being said, the friction caused by the Beyblades on wood wouldn't be enough to set a blaze because you see you actually need more than friction to start a fire with wood. It takes a lot of time to build up enough embers that can then ignite a fire. Having the Beyblade stadiums made out of metal is a lot more probable without the splinters. But Iger couldn't have been carrying such a structure with his sister if it were metal. As we can see that the base stadium is a solid structure and even if we made it out of aluminum, a solid base stadium would still have to be super heavy for a 10 year old kid to carry. Besides, back in Beyblade Burst first season, we do see that base stadiums can crack. Not only in the show, but in the manga as well. As Shu Kurenai breaks more than 10 base stadiums when he's practicing by himself, and some have broken completely into pieces, revealing that these stadiums are not hollow at all. And well, this gives us a clue, a big clue, as to what it is not made of, as materials like wood and metal break differently than what we see when Vault accidentally breaks the base stadium upon landing with Valtria. This means that we can also rule out glass, as when it breaks, it tends to shatter, more so with tempered glass. Normal glass and tempered glass could be used, don't get me wrong, it's very durable, but totally dependent on the thickness of the glass itself. And all that being said, the sheer scale of an anime base stadium would mean it would still be heavy. In the final season of Beyblade Burst, a new stadium is introduced that has two levels, one of which is completely see-through, meaning that at least the Interstellar Drop Battle Stadium being introduced this fall by Hasbro in real life is made of what appears to be glass on at least one level. There are a few materials that while being strong and light, can be formed into various shapes like rubbers, plastics, and synthetic resins. Now we know that if Beyblade stadiums were made of rubber, for example, the Beyblades would probably bounce a lot more and probably burst on contact. Now, not with each other, but with the stadium itself due to the high friction. And then that does leave us with plastics and resin. Speaking of plastics, did you ever wonder what plastic the Beyblades are made of in real life? Most of the plastic inside a Beyblade is composed of a polycarbonate, 
a very strong and moldable plastic material. It's impact resistant and can be made clear like glass, all the while being much lighter. This material can be made into sheets and well, I guess even a base stadium. Making Iger's stadium out of it would be smart, but let's remember one big fact. The Beyblades in the anime are made of metal themselves meaning that the bladers would likely be shredding the stadiums to pieces because of the immense power and speed the Beyblades possess during battle. Remember that some of the stadiums are kept outdoors year round, which is weird because we don't see any cats trying to jump inside every now and then when the bladers battle. But don't get your hopes up yet because over time and exposure to heat and sunshine, polycarbonate can become brittle. Or worse yet, it's the reason why in real life, the clear Beyblade stadium covers turn yellow when you leave them in the sun, also making them brittle. The solution therefore lies in something even harder, a material that can withstand the impacts and can be molded and is what I think the latest DB stadium is made of along with the windows on space shuttles and armored vehicles. It's called metal glass. Now I don't think it's what the rest of the base stadiums are made of because as we see, these chunks are not see-through and look more like cement. What, you think bleeding on cement is weird? <laughs> okay, okay, it kinda is. But hear me out. Cement is notorious for being strong. And they really only bring it up because when the breaks happen in the show, especially when Prime Apocalypse was introduced and broke the stadium into pieces, and even when Lane himself broke his own base stadium. Actually, even in the example I showed earlier with Vault and Faltria, that does look like a cement crack or like a crack in the sidewalk. And I know what you may be thinking, like, yo, Beyblade that, you can't Beyblade on cement. The tips would wear out so quick, bro. And you know what? You're right. The friction would pretty much pulverize the Beyblade drivers, making them completely useless after just a few battles. Unless you're Vault, then you'd just be awakening your driver. Aha! Uh -huh. But seriously, we now have a list of what the base stadiums are not made of. And that only leaves room for what it is and a brief commercial break. The Baby Labor Show and manga both illustrate different stadiums. And it's encouraging to see that in the manga, the stadiums resemble the Takaratami Bay stadiums we use in real life and have since progressed in size. Or maybe it's just changes due to the perspective. You could tell me. The one thing that remains a fact is the way that these fractures appear in the manga and animated in the show. In the manga, you can see a big pile of stadiums in which Shukuro and I was training with, and he broke them all. The stadiums aren't shattered nor ripped apart. They're literally broken into pieces and fractured as if it's a very hard material. Now this leads us to my Beyblade theory. Now I believe that the composition of the base stadiums in the show is a mixture of materials. Now let me explain. By using foam cement, a much lighter form of cement, and a thin membrane created from graphene, one of the strongest man-made materials, a Beyblade Stadium could light up, as we see in the anime. Not only that, the thin, one-atom-sized layer of graphene covering a cement could potentially power our character's Beyblades too. And that's because graphene can conduct electricity. In fact, it's the most conductive material we know of today, which can potentially also charge and make the Beyblade drivers spark the way we see on TV. Alternatively, it could also be a simple solution like carbon fiber skinning on top of the foam cement to give us a cool look. That we can also do at home. These technologies or methods may never be applied to a stadium in real life, but there are real world companies creating products using graphene, making it a clear candidate for future applications in real life, like unbreakable phone case covers and even integrated flexible circuits within your body. But I'm getting ahead of myself because the fact remains that these have not been made canon. And for the most part, we may never know the true composition of them as the manga and show have now come to a close. I make these videos out of love for the sport. I wish to one day see bladers from across the world participate in events just like the anime. And I've wondered if we can ever start a league of our own as portrayed in the show. Find out what it would take to have a TV tournament in this video. And thanks for chilling with this. Beyblade Dad.